Hey folks, Leo here with some information about ditching and switching. And in this case, we're talking about ditching Microsoft Windows and switching to Linux. And in particular, Linux Mint. Now to look at this desktop, I don't imagine you would suspect that it's not Microsoft Windows. It's a very familiar looking desktop environment and it's designed to be that way. If you notice down here the menu says LM on it and if I had left this with the default desktop picture on it it would have looked something more like this which is more of a giveaway that it's not Windows so yeah it looks and feels like Windows it's familiar but it's not Windows it's Linux now why would anybody want to get rid of Windows here are some of my reasons. It runs slow, unresponsive at times, it boots slow, it shuts down slow, virus and malware scans use up system resources. Windows updates, it's a mysterious process. What's it doing? Uh, how long is it going to take? What's it going to install? How many times is it going to reboot? You never know. Then they keep installing new features that you don't want, like Copilot AI stuff and they try and force you to migrate away from the Windows Calendar to the new Outlook I didn't want to use the new Outlook but can't use the calendar anymore Microsoft was sending me these messages saying Windows 10 end of support October 14th of 2025 no more updates and by the way, your current computer does not meet the Windows specs for Windows 11. And Windows 11 is going to be even more invasive. Uh, more AI stuff, forcing you to have Microsoft account, forcing you to buy subscriptions for Office and things like that. Now, what alternatives are there if you don't if you want to get away from Windows well if you go to a store and buy a new computer you're either going to get a PC with Windows on it or you're going to get a Mac and you're going to pay a premium cost for that or you might get a Chromebook but Google Chrome is not a full-fledged operating system it's a network operating system Linux is a full-fledged operating system. It's free and open source. It runs on new and used PCs. And um, by the way, Microsoft Office is not free. With a Mac, you get the iWork Office Suite. With Linux, you have your choice of several free Office Suites. LibreOffice is the one that comes with Lin Linux Mint. Now why use Linux Mint? Why do I suggest that? Here's a site called distrowatch.com. It's, it's existed for a long time. They've got information about all these different Linux distributions. And over here on this side there's a page hit ranking list. It's got the top 100 distributions of Linux. and for about the last 15 years or so Linux Mint has been in the top five of this list it's one of the very few Linux distributions that can make that claim so here's the Linux Mint page um, and down here I'll show you the home page for Linux Mint this is where you go to download the Linux Mint ISO file to install it. This will tell you what is Linux Mint and why choose Linux Mint. Now what are the reasons that you'd want to switch to Linux? or to, to Linux Mint. So Linux is free open source operating system and software. It's secure, it's fast, it's lean, it's efficient, it works on older PCs, 
the update system is easy it's transparent you can automate it you can see what files it's going to install before it installs them it's got backup tools you can use Linux Mint has a familiar desktop it's an easy transition for Windows users it's solid reliable time tested it works out of the box it's got a great selection of apps pre-installed including LibreOffice, Firefox uh, you can edit office, office Docs, you can uh, edit videos and photos and play your music and uh, look at your photos and manage photographs. And it's got a great software discovery installer app with a curated list of, of applications. And there's a lot more that aren't in that list that you can get also. Now, there are some barriers to adopting Linux. and the first one is that it really isn't sold in stores. You, it's a do-it-yourself project and there's some learning required. So you need to find a suitable new or used computer and there are many different Linux distributions to choose from and you need to figure out how to choose one. Uh, the nice thing about that is that myself and lots of other people have done a lot of testing and playing around because we like doing that kind of thing. Uh, there are some highly recommended ones and Linux Mint is one of the most recommended ones. So you don't have to do all that messing around unless you really want to. So you need to download and install Linux yourself or you need to ha have a tech helper who can help you do it. A lot of people have a grandchild who can do this kind of thing or maybe dad or your cousin or somebody who uh, likes to mess with nerdy stuff and can do this for you but you you do need somebody who knows something about computers and stuff because there's in general there's no dealer support going to rely on you or your or your tech helper and um, online support support communities so another um, barrier to adopting Linux is if you require special software that doesn't run on Linux then you're stuck using another operating system. Now, if you work for a company and they run software that only runs on Windows, which is the case a lot of times, then you're gonna be stuck using Windows. Now, I have a Mac and I run Apple's Logic Pro digital audio recording software on that Mac. Um, it lives in a particular room with speakers and microphones and things hooked up to it and uh, I use Linux computer for all my other stuff but not for a recording studio. Some of the other things that, that, that I do on this computer, browsing the internet, watching YouTube videos, do email, manage contacts, manage photos collection, edit photos and videos, and um, you know, I'm recording this right now on uh, o OBS Studio. Um, I'll be editing it on uh, Shotcut or another video editing software. You can edit docs and spreadsheets and presentations and data uh, databases, manage calendars, do Zoom meetings, artwork, play games, maintenance, system updates and backups. Play games, I have an asterisk there because um, a lot of a lot of games only run on Windows. There are ways that you can uh, do gaming on Linux um, using Steam, and there are things ways that you can run um, w Windows applications under Linux using emulation. But I don't mess with that kind of stuff. I'm not a big gamer, and not really into running Windows uh, apps on Linux. So. Uh, this stuff I do all with, with Linux apps. Okay, how do you get a Linux computer? Since you can't go to the store generally and buy one, you find an older Windows PC that is no longer being used. That's the way that people have typically gotten a PC to run Linux on. And so that's the reason why Linux is kept small and fast and doesn't require a, as much computing resources. Now we're in a position at this time that there are going to be a lot of computers abandoned by people because they are going to have to switch to to Windows 11 and their PC, their current PC does not 
support Windows 11, so they're going to have to buy a new computer, and there are going to be a whole lot of Windows 10 PCs hanging around that will be good for running Linux. So the way you get Linux installed on your computer is you need to have a USB stick, 8 gigabytes or larger, and you create a bootable USB stick with a utility like Ventoy. There are quite a few different utilities for doing this. Ventoy is one of the very best and easiest ones to use. So once you have that bootable USB stick done, you go to the Linux Mint website and download the latest Linux Mint ISO file. You copy it onto your USB stick and you boot your computer holding down the F12 key or F11 or whatever it is on your particular computer that does that brings up the boot menu and you select the ISO that you want to run. If, if you put multiple different uh, Linux distributions on that USB stick you can test several of them without ever installing them. Once you do decide you want to install it you just go ahead and run it. It's pretty easy. It usually comes up with with everything working and doesn't require any special messing around to get different drivers installed. And then set up your Wi-Fi so that you can connect to the internet, customize your desktop, and you're ready to roll. Okay, so that's my presentation about ditching and switching from Windows to Linux Mint. If you have something to add, leave a comment, and uh, thanks for watching.